Welcome to the Library Connection. I'm Tracy Thomas, Director at the B.B. Comer Library, and I want to thank you so much for joining us this week. As you know, each week we love to bring you special things that are happening at the library, and sometimes we like to bring you just special guests that have a special place in the library's heart. And so today we have one of those stories. We're going to be talking with David Dickey, and David is going to be a, no a stranger to nobody probably. He is a Silicaga native, and his family has wonderful ties to the Comer Library. And today we're going to be talking to David, and I hate to even call it a, a hobby because it's way more than that. He has been doing a fantastic job with photography for years now and I'm sure that you've probably seen some of his things floating around on social media or if you've seen him I'm sure he shared some with you but David is an excellent photographer and so we have a lot of people that come to the library and check out books on photography and um, it's one of those things that's kind of an art form that you know is is I would say David it is an art form to be able to take a camera and do a setting on a camera um, and take a good picture and so I think in that manner you are an artist so it's good to have you on today and to talk to you about this. It's good to be here thanks for asking me on. Well, David's family is no stranger to the Comer Library. If you've ever been in, you've seen the Donna Dickey Bookstore, and I have to open with that because, you know, your mom is, is, was our first love. <laughs> and uh, the bookstore was named after Donna, and there's a, a painting there that we're seeing on the screen, and that is one that was done, uh, Donna, showing Donna with some children because if you know anything about her, she loved children and she loved, she was on the PTA, the state PTA for years and she just always loved being a servant in her community and uh, she came to the library and wanted to do volunteer work way back when and uh, she ended up being on our library board for about 40 years so we kept her. Mm. <laughs> she stayed around a long time and we kept her and this painting right here is special when uh, Donna passed away her family donated that to the library and so we have that hanging in her Donna Dickey bookstore. Um, it's a special memory of her. So I just have to mention Donna because I can say on behalf of Dr. Shirley Spears, we would not have the Comer Library that we have if it had not been for your mom. Well, she, um, that was definitely number one in her heart <laughs> with her volunteer efforts that she did and um, it, it meant a lot to her and anything she could do in the community to help other people and help them learn more to further themselves that was a that was a major goal of hers in life education was a big thing with her and we've got so many great donna dickey stories and uh, <laughs> she always loved to go out and find things that that she might could sell and make a little money off of to donate to the library and so she was no stranger to estate sales and yard sales and if anybody ever uh, passed away or divorced and they had things they wanted to give donna was the first one to stand up and say i'll take them and so we had a little a special shelf in the back of the library where she would come in every day like clockwork she would sit her purse down and she would go back there and she would start cleaning and fixing things and repairing things to sell them and i don't know just a special lady very special and and i'm sure a lot of the she donated quite a bit after she passed away because as you know we were constantly bringing boxes of books to you put in the donna dickey bookstore and um, i know she would have been real happy about that so so we we called them our our donna dickey treasures after she passed away and, and the family was so sweet to bring things to us to help raise money for the comer library foundation which was special to her heart uh, she and dr shirley spears put a lot of miles on her cars they during did. the years uh, going all over the state of alabama talking to other librarians about how they could set up a friends group or a foundation and raise money for their libraries. So I had to give Miss Donna a plug because it's always a good day when we get to talk about well, Donna. I have to so. give her a plug too because everything I do with my photography now is very much because of her. She yeah. loved she loved watching your career and she was so proud when you went off and you know, I remember one time you took a, a job, was it Jackson, Alabama? Yes, that was that was the first newspaper job was Jackson, Alabama. We South. heard we heard lots of stories about David and Jackson, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I want to talk about today. Is is David has kind of come full circle over the last few years, and you're back home living in Sylacauga. You're married. You you have your family here, and so 
Um, we're glad that he's here, but David has done some really interesting things, and I, and I do want to talk about that. You went to Auburn University. I did. And tell us what your degree was in. I uh, got a degree in print journalism, finished up in 94, and went into the newspaper business, which is a dying thing now. So it's um, definitely a lot of career changes as far as that with a lot of people that were in that field. But there's still some that are rocking along in the community newspaper area. And the last job that I had was in uh, Powell, Wyoming, and that, that community paper is actually still thriving and doing well. When you were there, when did you start having a real love? I know you've told me the story about the first time they put a camera in your hand and told you to take some photographs for your stories. <clears throat> uh, it Actually, the love for photography really started with the sports photography because doing photos for your stories, that was, a, that was an important thing. And... I just bought a camera and got some good lenses and, and learned on the fly, but there were a lot of blurry, semi-blurry photos <laughs> published in newspapers <laughs> when I first started out, but it, it got better and just I researched and learned as much as I could to um, put a good product out there. And then it just spilled over into wildlife. When you were up north, you had some really good places to take pictures. Excellent places to take pictures. First was South Dakota. I was an outdoor writer there for the, um, the newspaper in Aberdeen, South Dakota, and that's where the love for bald eagles started coming into play. Got to see a lot, never got close enough to really get good photos, but when I moved to Wyoming, that's when I started getting closer to, um, I had better equipment, longer telephoto lenses, and I, that's when I got my first really good eagle photo and then it spilled into grizzly bears anything else elk moose whatever you could come across you never knew wow well we are going to take a quick break and when we come back we're going to have a look at some of your photographs okay and um, see david's art um, and i think you've got some stories behind some of your pictures and we certainly want to hear those stories because i don't know how long you have to sit and wait on some of these shots <laughs> long time on some of them we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. The Maxi Vizi Senior Adult Activity Center offers to senior citizens in the Sulacog and surrounding areas lots of fantastic activities throughout the week. Sewing, ladies bridge, quilting, game-o-rama, ceramic classes, bingo, travel club, and lots more. It's all at the Maxi Vizi Senior Adult Activity Center located next to the J. Craig Smith Community Center in Sulacaga. Don't spend any more time alone. Get out, make new friends, and have fun. Coosa Valley Medical Center, one of the top 10 hospitals in Alabama, is also Sylacauga's largest employer. Services from the emergency room, to surgery, to cancer treatment, to post-stroke care. You won't believe what's right in your backyard. It's Coosa Valley Medical Center in Sylacauga. So, if you're sick, in Alabama, choose one of the top 10 hospitals in Alabama. That is Coosa Valley Medical Center. The all-new Marble City Pharmacy in Sylacauga is your destination for the highest quality health care. Our remodeled and expanded pharmacy gives us the space to serve more patients. We've added a drive through window for those times when you don't feel like getting out of your vehicle. And we still offer delivery within city limits. We feature a full line of over-the-counter medications and supplements. And don't forget our stunning new gift department. New building, same great people. Marble City Pharmacy, here for life. Welcome back to the Library Connection. I'm Tracy Thomas, director at the Comer Library. And today we're talking with David Dickey and we've just been uh, talking about David. We hate to even call it a hobby because it's way more than that. Um, David is a fantastic photographer and we were establishing the fact that you're from Sylacauga and born and raised here. And I wanted to mention some more about your family. We talked about Miss Donna and, and the love that we have for her, not just at the Comer Library, but in the community as a whole. But I also wanted to mention your dad, Doug Dickey, was at Avondale Mills for years. Uh, dad was, um, he was always instrumental in getting me outdoors. Um, I was probably about seven or eight years old when we went fishing for the first time 
and his fishing crowd, they loved to fish on Lake Martin. They, we'd have a week long camping trip where we'd go fishing in the spring and being that dad and I were both graduates of Auburn, we always talked about eagles. And at the time, the only eagle I'd ever seen was a golden eagle that was at Auburn. So we never saw one in the wild and we always looked for them, but the effects of DDT had really hit their population. And so we never got to see one in the wild together. Uh, didn't see my first one until the mid 90s at um, Wind Creek State Park down on Lake Martin. And that was, it was just the coolest experience to finally see that. And of course I called him and told him about it. And he was, he was pretty excited about it. And we actually, he took a few trips with me to Wind Creek to see if we could see any. And we didn't have any luck together, but he, um, he always got to see if I got a decent picture, he got to see them and he always enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. Well, I know he would be so proud of what all you're doing now. So let's take a look at some of your pictures. There we go. So this is what I've, this hobby has, like you said, <laughs> has turned into more than that. Um, I never had a lot of luck finding eagles around Alabama back in the 90s and early 2000s when I was, when I was here before I, and then I moved off and started getting some experience with them. But when I came back, um, it was by pure chance that I found a good spot on the Tallapoosa River. I was at Logan Martin Lake one day and spoke with a um, fisherman down there and he asked me what I was trying to take pictures of and I said eagles and ospreys. He said, oh, you're in the wrong place and he <laughs> sent me to a place uh, near Lineville, Alabama. And the first time I went there, it was, there were just ospreys everywhere and of course, the eagles would come in occasionally, and I was just totally shocked that there were that uh, the abundance like that. And I think it was my fourth fourth trip down to the river. Uh, that's when I started getting the real close up shots of the eagles. They're they're kind of fickle. They show up some days, <laughs> some days they don't. But when they uh, when they decide to show up and get in close, they uh, put on a pretty good show. And this is just one of those shots. That is amazing. So let's take a look at another one. There you go. So this one, uh, this is actually courtesy of an osprey that had caught a fish and the eagle was sitting up in a tree on the shoreline and they watch the ospreys and when the ospreys catch larger fish, they'll come in and they will steal their catch. Oh, wow. The ospreys are pretty smart. They'll, they'll end up dropping the fish and this was one of those times where the fish was dropped right in front of me and this eagle is swooping down to get that fish but there's also at the same time there's about two or three other adult eagles flying around and this is the one that's dead set on getting the fish. When you look at your pictures like this David do you and I'm sure you do do you remember like each trip, oh, that's that eagle this trip. Can you differentiate between these or do they uh, all start uh, to run together sometimes? Right now I can still somewhat differentiate between them because the experiences where you get them really close, they are few and far between a lot of the time. Um, my first close up of, a, of an eagle was fourth trip and I figured it up, it was about 36 hours into my time down there when I finally got that shot. Wow. So something like that right there. That's um, the one I was talking about where it swooped down and got the fish that the osprey dropped. This actually um, on the edge of a small island out in the river and it's got the fish in its claws. But the previous picture where the eagle was floating in the water and looking like a duck, it had dived into the water. Usually they skim the water and they'll grab the fish and go, but this one just piled directly onto the fish oh, wow. and had to uh, swim to get to that island or get to a little shallower water where it could fly up to that island. And now, David, when you take a picture like this, it almost looks like you took it like aerial from above to get that. How do you, are you just sitting in a chair on the bank? A watching, lot of times, or, yes. Are you up on a ladder? Uh, no, actually, the. <laughs> 
the spot where I'm at, there's a pretty big drop off and sometimes I'll shoot on top of that drop off and other times I'll scale down the rocks and get on the shoreline so I'm eye level. But I love these shots where you have the top side of a bald eagle because it's something that you just don't, nor most times you see pictures from the underside, but sure. it's really fun to get the shots like that because it shows the details and the feathers and it's just a, it's almost like you're flying as its wingman. Mm -hmm. it, it looks like an aerial shot. Now something like that right there, do you, do you have to spend a lot of time editing your photographs or? I, I do not. Uh, if I have to spend a lot of time editing, it's usually a throwaway shot. Um, I do shoot in a RAW format, which catches more colors than a JPEG format. And it's once you play around with the software, you start learning to how to adjust the colors and some of the shadow areas. But it's, it's not too terribly complicated, but if you have to do too much, to me, it tends up to be a throwaway photo. And that, that's one from the first experience I had close up with a bald eagle grabbing a fish that an osprey had dropped into the river and that was probably 25 yards away from me when it happened. It was, um, it was an exciting experience. The colors are amazing in the pictures. That's why I was asking about editing and that's amazing that you don't have to do a lot of editing on yours. Uh, with, the, with the technology today, with Nikon, Canon, Sony, any of the big camera makers there, it's pretty pretty amazing what you're gonna see straight out if you can get your exposure right, right off the start. Now this one right here, tell us about this. Uh, this is in, uh, right outside of Silvergate, Montana. This was on a, a trip that my wife Stephanie and I took and usually when we go, we go for about 10 days to two weeks and um, we get into a lot when we get up there, but <laughs> Silvergate, Montana on the upper part of the uh, Yellowstone National Park is um, it's just a wonderful place to go, but this is somewhat of the town bison in Silvergate, <laughs> so we're in the car and we're a decent, we're, we're not up close. Uh, I've got a telephoto lens and he just happened to be going by and it was snowing that day and it just made for, uh, I was just trying to grab any kind of shot and it actually just turned out I was just trying to get the focus on the eye and was going to see what happened with it and it, it turned out to be a really, one of my favorite shots actually. Looks like you got to know him really well. It looks, like, <laughs> <laughs> looks like you were really close. I'm glad to know you weren't. <laughs> so we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to take a look at some more of your fantastic photography, David. Thank you. There's a lot in life to smile about. Are loose dentures or missing teeth keeping you from enjoying the things you love? Don't miss out on enjoying life's precious moments. You can be you again with affordable mini dental implants. You can smile again laugh out loud, and have your self-confidence back. Let us help you make it memorable. I'm Dr. Rick Redmond. Call me today for a free consultation and give me the opportunity to change your life. Great, what am I gonna do now? Time to visit Brown's Auto Collision. No problem at all. We've contacted your insurance company and we can get you back into regional condition right away. And I just wanna remind you, that all of our work is covered by a lifetime warranty. We're done. Wow, that was easy and looks great. Brown's Auto Collision. Where, Where quality is no accident. The all new Marble City Pharmacy in Sylacauga is your destination for the highest quality health care. Our remodeled and expanded pharmacy gives us the space to serve more patients. We've added a drive through window for those times when you don't feel like getting out of your vehicle. And we still offer delivery within city limits. We feature a full line of over the counter medications and supplements. And don't forget our stunning new gift department. New building, same great people. Marble City Pharmacy, here for life. Welcome back to the Library Connection. I'm Tracy Thomas, director at the Comer Library, and today we're talking with David Dickey, and we're talking with David about his photography. Your photography is excellent. Thanks, 
and I'm glad you decided not to go into print uh, journalism <laughs> <laughs> that, that photography caught your eye because your photographs are absolutely amazing. I do want to mention, you and I have talked about this, that you know, a lot of people say, oh, I grew up in Sylacauga, I don't, I don't want to stay in Sylacauga, I want to move somewhere bigger, but you've had that experience, you've done that, and you came back home. And I'm so glad that you came full circle and came back to Sylacauga because I, I, I love our community, I love our town, and I think it's just a wonderful place to live. But you found something special in Sylacauga, which, you know, <laughs> has got you rooted here. And you made a uh, mention of Stephanie, your wife, yeah. and uh, about the fact that she's patient with you on a lot of these photography trips. She is very patient and very supportive. Um, some of these trips, so I, I work at Trailwares and when I do get an off day, and um, Nancy Willis is fantastic about <laughs> She's making amazing sure that too. we get our off days. <laughs> uh, some of the, the days that I have off, I will start out at 4.35 in the morning and driving to Lineville, sometimes uh, West Point Lake in Georgia, and I will stay all day and won't get home until 8 or 9 o'clock, especially in the summertime when the light is better there at night. So I'll get in really late and as soon as I get in I'm wanting to get on the computer and look at my images so she's lost me for a couple of more <laughs> hours but she's been just absolutely fantastic and when I moved home from Wyoming we got reconnected and it's um, I mean it's been a wonderful thing and just love her to death and what, what she does to support what I do. Well, it's nice that she shares your love for it because it, it certainly is a wonderful thing that you're doing. We want to take a look at a few more of your images. Uh, another another vice, and, and when you live in Wyoming, people that live there, they kind of laugh when you take pictures of bison because they're so common, but to me they're just so fascinating because they're, they're just massive animals, but this one was another of our trips uh, to Yellowstone, and it's actually in the middle of a thunderstorm in the north part of the park, and this big bison was just unfazed by it, and um, it was another one where I just rolled the window down and was trying <laughs> to stay dry and stay out of the lightning, but it just made for a really, really cool looking photo. It's great. Let's take it. There we go. Uh, Gulf Shores, great blue hair, and one of my favorite birds because they're so awkward but they're they're so much fun to watch they're entertaining and they are they can be quite violent with each other I've oh, learned wow. I've I've seen some pretty violent territorial attacks with those things but where I photograph those in Gulf Shores they're pretty laid back there's a lot of fishermen around and that one was funny because he just looks like he was giving me the stink eye <laughs> Uh, one of my favorite bear photos, this is in Yellowstone, and that's actually in um, about mid-June. Oh, wow. Uh, it was one of those freak snowstorms that popped up, and by the afternoon it was up in the 60s, and most of the snow had melted, but um, we were set up and watching this. I had quite a few photography friends, and we had we knew there were some bears in this one particular area, and uh, we were just hanging out there, and this one came came along and it just made for a really cool looking photo and some not so great weather at the time but it I, I just thought the snow just really made that a dramatic looking photo and he looks kind of menacing there but he's actually about to start tearing into that fallen tree looking okay. for bugs and insects So when I don't have time to <laughs> make a long trip, I uh, set up hummingbird feeders in the, in the yard and get hummingbirds to come in. And I will sit in my, my chair and take thousands of pictures. I was gonna ask, how many do you roll off to get one shot? Well, to get that shot, and that was a specific shot that I was wanting to get, I think I shot for about two or three weeks at probably an hour a day during that stretch and I finally got one where the sun lined up and the wing positioning and everything was just perfect. How many images do you have to search through? How many do you take on average to find one like that? That day, I'm trying to think, I was actually, I had my radio on and was listening to a football game at the time, but I think I, I shot for a, 
about a third and a fourth quarter of a football game. <laughs> and I think I took about maybe 400 photos that day. Oh, wow. And I got it pretty early in that stretch, but I had some other good ones, but it just depends. Some, yeah. some days you'll shoot 50 photos and get that one you want. Some days you'll shoot a thousand and not get anything that just really. Now this is a special one. Yes, it is. <laughs> that, um, that's Hut, my old Chesapeake Bay Retriever that moved to Wyoming with me. Uh, that, that dog was, he, for a better part of almost 10 years, he, he was my life. Everything I did, I was making sure I was putting food on the table for him and doing what I needed to do for him. And he was, he was my co-pilot. That's uh, a beautiful picture. He would always go with me into Yellowstone. And the bad thing about taking him into Yellowstone is you can't just let a dog run loose in Yellowstone. So he pretty much had to stay in the, in the SUV the whole time. But as soon as we'd get on out of the, out of the park and get into the National Forest, we had our spots where he could go swim and do his thing, and that was one of them. Now here we are, another one. This is an Osprey. This is really my, this is the one that I'm passionate about. I've, I've always loved these birds, and uh, this was another one that Dad and I didn't really see a lot of when we were, when I was growing up, because they suffered a lot of the same effects that the eagles suffered with okay. the DDT. Their eggshells would be thin, and when they'd be sitting on their eggs, they would crack the eggs, and the young wouldn't make it. So, okay. they're um, quite a recovery story too. And that the one with the osprey flying straight toward me—that's that's at Gulf Shores. Um, one of my favorite shots. Oh, that is. That's a great one. I love. A lot of photographers don't want their wildlife making con eye contact with the lens. But to me, I, I love that. I just think that's a neat image. I know we've got about 30 seconds left. Mm -hmm. I want you to mention your, your birds in your backyard. You're uh, doing something with that. I've got a, a pop-up blind I've set up near our bird feeders in the backyard. And it just, it's just another thing where if I've only got a few hours in a day or an hour in a day, I can go out and do it in the backyard. And it just I just try to shoot every day so I know I don't get rusty with my settings on the camera, and I'm always ready to go. I think that's wonderful. Well, David, thank you so much for coming on today. It's nice to connect, catch up with you again, but it's fantastic to see what you're doing because you do an amazing job. Thank you. Thank Good you so much. Here. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. You can go to smugmug.com and search for David Dickey and take a look at some of his images. Thank you for joining us.